All right, guys, let's play with the governor. And I apologize, my throat's getting worse by the minute. Hopefully you can hear me all right. The governor is a pretty simple process. This is the fly bars controller's um, way of maintaining head speed. Um, the nice thing about using a governor built into a fly bars unit, such as the Brain or the V-Bar or the Skookum SK540 or 720, those have governors as well. The advantage of using a fly barless based governor is it's actually what's referred to as a predictive governor, meaning with a standard ESC governor, the speed controller has to wait for you to load the head and see a drop in RPM before it responds. There's a delay. With a fly barless based governor, there's no delay. The fly barless sees the input from the head from the transmitter as it's happening and signals the speed controller, hey, we're gonna need some more power as you request it. On the fly, on the demand, on demand is really slick. I strongly suggest fly barless governors whenever possible. So, there's a couple of pieces of information you need when doing governors. You need the gear ratio. You need to know the sensing device or divider, which is um, number of magnetic poles divided by two in an electric motor, or the number of um, magnetic signals on a nitro governor. You also then need to tell it what head speed you wish it to hold. The nice thing about the brain is it does give you all three flight modes. So my DX18, I can utilize all three flight modes. If you have a DX7 or DX7S or 6 idle and has one idle up, you just won't get the advantage of the third, but it will work just fine. To calculate gear ratio, uh, you can either do the math yourself or you can click on this handy calculator. Let me bring it down to the field of view for you. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to input the number of teeth on the pinion, in my case 12, and then you're going to tell it how many teeth are on the main gear. And on the Synergy E9 slash E6 that I'm building this on, uh, that number is 119. And when I press OK, it's going to do the math for me and tell me I have a 9.916 to 1 gear ratio. This is an electric helicopter, so the sensing divisor, um, you need to know the number of magnetic poles on your motor. In my case, the Scorpion HK3 4025 550 has 10 magnetic poles. So you want to take the number of the poles and divide it by 2. So it knows the sensing divisor is 5. I installed the 4.5 to 1 tail gear ratio speed up so that I could run lower head speeds. So my normal is going to be 1950. My idle 1 will be 2050. And then the idle 2 where I'll spend most of my time is 2150. That's, that's right about where I have my N5C. It's, where I, it's, it's not super aggressive. It should give me some good long flight times with my sport big air style. And again, I put the speed up gear ratio on the tail so I'll have plenty of tail authority. Now that I have told the governor all of my desired information, I am ready to actually program the throttle limits. <clears throat> this is an extremely important step. The, for the governor to work accurately, the flyballless unit has to understand how much signal to give the speed controller to, for the speed controller to spit out the desired amount of power. So what we're going to do now, now this is going to be a little bit noisy because I'm sure the screaming of the motor um, will be picked up by the camera microphone rather well. Um, but what we have to do is spin the motor up now. And this is why I took the blades off and left the tail boon off because there's just there's nothing that can go flying. Uh, the rotor head is empty and there's no tail blades on it to go nuts. So we are going to spin the motor up. The first thing you want to do is make sure your transmitter is, has a linear throttle curve. Um, you're going to hear my speed controller boot up. Counts off the number of cells. It's freaking out because it's not seeing enough, not seeing zero. So what I need to do is increase the amount of zero, decrease the low end throttle. Now the speed controller sees zero. Now, what I want to do is test it. Make sure that was really enough. I'm going to turn my speed controller back off plug it back in. If it arms right away, I know that value is good. If it doesn't arm right away, in my case, it armed right away. So now my minimum throttle is correct. The speak, the fly bars controller now knows what zero is to the speed controller. 
Now here's where it's going to get noisy. I'm going to throw my throttle on the transmitter to 100%. And you will see, hopefully you can hear me over the motor, down here, the RPM is being read by the speed controller. What I need to do now is slowly increase the maximum travel until I stop seeing an increase in speed. One click, went up. Second click, went up again. Third click, nothing happened. Fourth click, nothing happened. So I have maxed it out. Now I'm going to bring it down until it goes down. So now I now go back up one. I now know that my turbo... But that's pulled down. I know that was really hard to hear, but basically what I did there was I set the transmitter to 100% throttle, so the flybarless unit is telling the speed controller what it currently thinks was, was maximum. Let it spin up. And then I slowly increased the maximum travel on the servo until the speed controller stopped getting faster. So that now that I am finished, the flybarless unit now knows what zero is, and it now knows what 100% is. So it can do its job. The transmitter, um, the what is it? Governor needs 10% more power to maintain speed. It knows how, what to tell the speed controller. So my my uh, calibrations are done. The next thing to do is we need to tell my transmitter what throttles to to signal the speed the flybars unit to export these numbers. And if you scroll down on the left here. This is actually telling you what those numbers are. On an electric unit, if I want it for to get the governor to spit out 1950, I need to set my flat curve at 30%. So now that I'm done, I'm flipping on hold, and I'm actually going to even go one step further and unplug the speed controller because I don't want it to spin up anymore. I'm going to go into my transmitter on throttle curves, and I'm going to set my normal to a flat 30%. And what you're going to notice, the 1950 went green because my transmitter is now telling the flybars unit I want 1950 head speed. The reason you use a, a flat 30% rather than a linear, and what I mean by 30, I'll show you here in a second. What I mean by flat, hopefully you can see that, is I put all four points in the transmitter on normal to 30%. That way I've got full collective control. Now my left stick, um, the, the, in normal mode, the governor is always going to hold 1950 and I've got full positive negative pitch travel. Now, so 30 is normal. To do my 2050, I need to tell it flight mode 2 is a flat 60%. So I'm going to my transmitter. And I'm going to tell my transmitter 60. You notice now the 2050 is lit up. Set my, again, all four points to 60 on normal, to, on my idle up one or flight mode two. And now in flight mode two, I have a linear curve. All four say 60. And again, again, now in flight mode 2, I have complete positive negative pitch control. And then last but not least, to tell this system I want 2150, I program my speed and my transmitter to, to broadcast a flat 100%. So now I'm going to go into my transmitter and tell it that idle 2, or, <coughs> or flight mode 3, is 100%. It's a little confusing. The transmitter thinks it's telling the governor to, to give it everything it's got. But what you're really doing is activating the speed. So now, in flight mode 3, I have all four at 100%. Excuse me. All four at 100%. The 2150 is green because it knows that's what I'm asking for. And then I left hold in my system to zero. So my hold still works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it. I'm going to put on flight mode 1 and flip off. Whoops. 
Cornhole.